Good morning. Today is Sunday, the 29th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Is it just me, or does it seem like October has lasted forever? It's like the longest month ever. <clears throat> it is written in... I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. The prophet Joseph Smith said that we never can comprehend the things of God and of heaven, but by revelation. Only by the power of the Holy Ghost can the fullness of the gospel blessings be both understood and received. The Lord declared form. By my spirit will I enlighten them, and by my power will I make known unto them the secrets of my will, yea, even those things which I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor yet entered into the heart of man. Revelation is for every faithful follower of the Lord who has entered the waters of baptism and then received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Our happiness is our happiness in this life and in the world to come is closely related to how fully we cultivate the spirit of revelation. I could do better at cultivating the spirit of revelation. I feel I'm too practical might be the right word. Anyways, today is Titus chapter 3 and Philemon. Um, in chapter 3, saints must live righteously after baptism. Uh, it's a really good chapter with a lot of good verses to pick from. And then Philemon is just a letter to a guy named Philemon. And the gospel changes a servant into a brother. Um, he talks about a guy who Philemon should welcome or like accept or help. And if that guy owes Philemon money, then just add it on to Paul's bill. If anything happened between him and that guy, just put it on Paul. Paul will take care of it. And, um, and then just leave the guy alone. So that is the gist of Philemon. I chose my verse from chapter three. I chose verses two through four. Uh, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men, for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, towards man appeared. This, of course, all my stuff kind of relates to the job about work. Um, what I wrote is I must let the love of Christ change my heart that I will no more speak evil of my fellow men. It's super easy to, people aren't kind all the time. Um, and it's super easy to, once they walk out the door, turn right around and to one of my associates be like, Oh my gosh, did you see her? She's lucky. She's still alive. Blah, blah, blah. It's really easy to speak evil of my fellow men, especially at the job. Um, and it's Christmas time is the worst. It really is. Namely because people are the worst. They're irritable. They're mean. So on and so forth. So that's my personal statement. I need to work harder. If uh, Maybe if I create a loving, welcoming environment, they will be in kind. They will respond in kind. Okay, we have Jeffrey for today, for Philemon 1. <clears throat> Anyone could be pleasant, patient, and forgiving on a good day. A Christian has to be pleasant, patient, and forgiving on all days. Christ's forgiveness is it, of his tormentors was perhaps the quintessential moment of his ministry. Pre 
transfiguring the eternal forgiveness he would offer all of us, this specific act on the cross was a perf was as perfect in its example as it was difficult to endure. Is there someone who needs forgiveness from you in a more personal way? Is there someone in your home, someone in your family, someone in your neighborhood who has done an unjust or unkind thing or an unchristian thing? Is it possible that even this very moment in the rush to get to work or to some meeting, some unkind word was spoken and the vault of human pain increased yet again? All of us are guilty of such transgressions. <coughs> so there surely must be someone who yet needs your forgiveness. And please don't ask if that is fair. If the injured should have to bear the burden of forgiveness for the offender. Don't ask if justice doesn't demand that it be the other way around. No, whatever you do, don't ask for justice. You and I know that what we plead for is mercy, and that is what we must be willing to give. This, is, this was exactly what the Apostle Paul asked of one of his converts, Philemon. When justice would have demanded punishment for... Onesim, Onesimus, a runaway slave, Paul sent him back to his owner with the plea to treat him not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved. Mercy was what Paul said, for love's sake I rather beseech thee. I didn't know it was, like, it makes a little bit more sense now what Paul's writing about now that I know that it was a runaway slave it wasn't said in the thing at least I didn't catch it if it was said my beloved brothers and sisters I testify that forgiving and forsaking offenses old or new is central to the grandeur of the atonement of Jesus Christ I testify that ultimately such spiritual repair can come only from our divine redeemer he who rushes to our aid with healing in his wings. We thank him for our, and our Heavenly Father who sent him that renewal and rebirth, a future free from old sorrows and past mistakes, are not only possible, but they have already been purchased, paid for at an excruciating cost, symbolized by the blood of the Lamb who shed it. We can almost hear the Savior say, as did the Apostle Paul, If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I have written it with mine own hand, I will repay it, albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. With the apostolic authority granted me by the Savior of the world, I testify that the tranquility to the soul that reconciliate that reconciliation with God and each other will bring if we are meek and courageous enough to pursue it. Cease to contend one with another, the Savior pled. If you know of an old injury, repair it. Care for one another in love. just makes you think he just makes you think and go well was it something I did yes yes it was it always is am I the one who should be forgiving yes yes you should you always should all right today's the 29th I will leave you now with a prayer from a diary of prayer this one is from the sun dances O God, hearken to my prayer. Let my earnest petition come to thee, for I know that thou art hearing me, as surely as thou, as though I saw thee with mine eyes. Let no fancy come to my mind. Let no ruffle come to my spirit, that is hurtful to my poor body this night, nor ill for my soul at the hour of my death. 
but mayest thou thyself, O God of life, be at my breast, be at my back, thou to me as a star, thou to me as a guide, from, the, from my life's beginning to my life's closing. All right, that was Titus chapter 3 and Philemon chapter 1. And next week we get into Hebrews. Let me... All right, Hebrews chapter 1 through 6. And chapter 6 is broken up into Saturday and Sunday, so that's going to be a short day. But next week will also be November. All right. So that's all for today. We will see you next time. Happy Sunday. Bye.